Hey girls, this is a review video for uh, Friday, May 29th, Ooh, last school day in May. And your uh, packet review today is on fractions. So we're going to do a review of a couple things. So first of all, comparing fractions. Well, we know that if we're comparing fractions or adding fractions or subtracting fractions, we need a common denominator. We need it to be apples to apples. When I look at my first example here, I have halves, I have twelves, twelfths. This is not apples to apples. So I'm going to use a common denominator. Now, remember, if you can't think of one off the top of your head, then you need to list the multiples. Now, when I list the multiples of two, I get to 12, so a common denominator is 12. I'm going to rewrite 1 half with a denominator of 12. Which means I have to multiply by 6 6 and 1 half is equal to 6 twelfths. I don't have to do anything to the 4 twelfths. 6 twelfths is greater than 4 twelfths, which means that 1 half is greater than 4 twelfths. Also remember the, the butterfly, the shortcut that we used in comparing fractions. In the butterfly, we kind of did the crisscross. Okay. 2 times 4 would give us 8. Okay. 12 times 1 is 12. 12 is greater than 8. Matches our work here, which we already found. Now I have mixed numbers. When I compare mixed numbers, I have to look at the whole number first. I have two and a half. I have four. Four holes. Think about it. If I had two and a half dollars, four dollars. Well, four dollars is more. So two and a half is less than four. But then I have one here. I have two and three fourths and two thirds. The whole numbers are the same, so I have to compare the three fourths and the two thirds. Now, I know that 12 is a common denominator for four and three. Four, eight, 12, three, six, nine, 12. So I'm going to rewrite 3 fourths with a denominator of 12. And I'm going to write 2 thirds with a denominator of 12. Multiplying by 3 thirds, I get 9 twelfths. Multiplying by 4 fourths, I get 8 twelfths. 9 twelfths is greater than 8 twelfths, which means 2 and 3 fourths is greater than 2 and 2. Next, adding and subtracting. So the first example is already apples to apples. 1 fourth plus 2 fourths equals 3 fourths. I never add denominators. Okay? I never add denominators. That would be like saying, one apple plus two apples gives me three oranges. Nope, I still have three apples. Here, I do not have apples to apples. So I'm going to rewrite my fractions. Well, I know that four is a common denominator for two and four. One half is equal to two fourths. I already have three fourths. Two fourths plus three fourths gives me five fourths. I have an improper fraction.
I can pull out a whole and I still have an extra one fourth. So my final answer is one and one fourth. Next, I have some examples with mixed numbers. I'm going to add the fractions and the whole numbers. So I end up with four and three fourths. My next one, I'm going to add the fractions and the whole numbers, and I end up with three and five fourths. Well, again, I have an improper fraction. I can pull out a whole, that four fourths, and I still have an extra one fourth. So my final answer is three, four, and one fourth. Now let's move to some subtracting. So my first example for subtracting, I have apples to apples, seven eighths minus two eighths. It's simply five eighths. My next example, I have seven eighths minus three fourths. Not apples to apples. The common denominator for four and eight is eight. Four, eight. So I keep the seven eighths because it's already written with a denominator of eight. Three fourths is equal to six eighths. 7 eighths minus 6 eighths is 1 eighth. So 7 eighths minus 3 fourths is equal to 1 eighth. My next example, I have mixed numbers. I'm going to subtract the fractions. I'm going to subtract the whole numbers. I'm going to look at the fractions first, though. Can I subtract 3 minus 1? Yes, I can. 3 fourths minus 1 fourth is 2 fourths. 2 minus 1 is 1. So my final answer is 1 and 2 fourths. However, what if I switch it around and make it 2 and 1 fourth? minus one and three fourths. Look at the fractions. One minus three, I don't have enough. So basically I have to borrow. The two is becoming a one and four fourths. One and one is two. Plus, I still have my extra one-fourth. So I've rewritten this mixed number as one and five-fourths. This is very important. Now, I can do my subtraction. Five-fourths minus three-fourths is two-fourths. One minus one is nothing, so my answer is two fourths. Two and one fourth minus one and three fourths is two fourths. Now let's move on to multiplying fractions and whole numbers. So, first few examples. So my first two examples, I simply have a whole number times a fraction. I have three of the one-fourths. So that's basically repeated addition. I have a one-fourth, 
plus another one fourth plus another one fourth. Three times one fourth is three fourths. Now I have three fourths times two. I have two of the three fourths. I basically have a three fourths and another three fourths. Two times three is giving me six of the fourths. Improper, six fourths is equal to one and two fourths. Now you'll notice in my last example, I have two times one and one fourth. So that means I have two of the ones, but I also have two of the one fourths. I have two of the ones and I have two of the one fourths. Two times one is two. Two times one fourth. Whoops. Two times one fourth is two fourths. My final answer, two and two fourths. Very important, don't forget, because this is a mixed number, it's two times the one, it's two times one fourth. So your responsibility is to do that review, take, take a picture of it and send it to me. Remember that online, you're simply doing lesson nine. There's no problem set that goes with that lesson nine. And I will see you on Monday.